We're about to get into some very step-by-step -step stuff, uh, but so far, do you feel like this is a good pace that we're taking right now? Yeah. Learning some cool stuff? Okay. What I would like to do is, um, let's see, this is like always the interesting thing for me to try to use. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. What we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about we're going to talk about research, where you can find. You can either create your own viral videos. You can find viral videos. I'm going to walk through research on how to find these kind of videos. Uh, and inside of that research, we're also going to talk about a big issue, which is copyright infringement. If you're going to use a video that's not your own, um, there's always an element of risk uh, if you're using anybody else's stuff ever. Now, some stuff is very is very, very available. Some stuff is very obviously copyright infringing. Okay, uh, So we're going to have to talk about that. After you research, then what we're going to do is we're going to publish the video. That may require some editing. Remember I showed you the video of the runner, and it was like five minutes long? Uh, prior to publishing, you should clip it down into a short little, like, that probably could have been 30 seconds and could have done its point. It could have got way, way more viral. I'm going to show you how to publish it properly. There's a way to publish it properly, how to get the right thumbnail, how to get the right video, how to publish it on the right page, stuff like that. After you publish it, next thing we're going to do is we're going to advertise it. That's going to be a fun little section. I'm actually going to place some ads right in front of you. Okay? Advertising it basically means boosting the post, give it some engagement, uh, get it going. After you advertise it, we're going to talk about monetizing it. So now after you kind of got it going for a little bit, we're going to monetize it. We're going to figure out how to make money from it because there's no way you can sustain paid advertising without an ROI coming in. And then after this, we're going to talk about multiplying it. Okay? Um, so you're going to research, publish, advertise, monetize, and multiply. I, I put monetizing, but it's easier to say monetize. Research, publish, advertise, monetize, multiply. Okay? That's kind of what we're going to go through. Um, so let's start with research. Okay? There's going to be types of videos. You know, sorry if my spelling is, or sorry, my writing. It's, I'm never, I'm, I don't know how many people are used to drawing on a TV. It's not like an everyday. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I've ever done this was last time I was here. I don't have a TV at home. I draw on. So uh, let's talk about types of videos, okay? So you have, um, you know, you're going to have like branding videos. I showed you branding ones where I was branding myself and getting exposure. You're going to have sales videos where you're like directly like selling something. You're going to have maybe like, um, cool videos that we talked about, like videos that are like really cool that you think are like, you think, wow, this is like, I want to put this on my channel. You're going to have viral videos, which have, you know, we're just going to put the wow factor. Like, wow. Like, people are passionate. So, cool factor, wow factor. You can have sales videos, branding videos. And this is going to be the range. So, for this one right here, branding videos, I'd say these are more like one zero club. Uh, sales videos, one zero club. Cool videos, two zero club. Viral videos, three zero club. And then four zero, five zero. Just r it gets it gets crazy. Um, it gets to the point where I got a, I got a testimonial in our community of somebody who said, Chris, you know what you never talk about is the fact that. When your video goes viral, people also like your fan page. So you're getting likes for free on your fan page. He says, I have over 100,000 likes on my fan page, and I've never, I've never ran an ad for anybody to like my fan page. They're just liking it because when they see the video in the news feed, there's a little button that says like the page. He's like, just from that. So like, the videos have done millions of views, and then I've got 100,000 fans. So now, every time I just publish a video with no ads, it does like 10, 20, 30,000 views, just with no ads. Crazy. So that's viral is where it's at. So there's some videos that are your own content. That's going to be like a video like this. I might take a video of like a quick like little five minutes of this. Go, hey, everybody, Chris Record here. I've got a sample of a class today I want to share with you. Let's dive right into it. Here's what you're going to learn. Let's dive into it. And then cut to this. That's a branding video, maybe a sales video. That's all I'm really expecting is one penny per view. I'm not going to get upset if it doesn't get two pennies. I mean, because I'm not going to get upset if people aren't sharing it. It's just very businessy. It's not something everybody wants to, you know, cat videos go viral, not videos of guys in orange hat teaching Facebook ads. 
So I'm not going to get upset over it. That's just that first type. Why I still do them, even though they're one zero club, I still do them because you make money. At the end of the day, it's cool to have a five million view video, but you know what's cooler? $100,000 in the bank, right? So at the end of the day, I don't care the actual cost of, the, of views on the video. I don't care at all. I care about the ROI. How much money am I putting in? How much money am I making back? That's all that matters at the end of the day. The rest is just practice. So then you, you graduate into cool videos, and we'll kind of show you. You might think that it's a viral video. I'm going to teach you a very specific difference from a cool video and a viral video. Viral videos, you'll know something's viral when you feel the emotion. You see something and you're like, oh, everybody has to see this. Versus a cool video, you might think to yourself, oh, that's, I'll use that one. That one's really cool. Nope, won't go viral. You'll, you need to learn the difference. So we'll talk about these. We'll also talk about where to find them. Okay? So let's do, uh, let's go, let's go back to mine. Um, oh, I don't know where my navigation bar went. There it is. When you look at my videos here on, on my page, we left off right here. Oh my God, this kid is insanely good at pool trick shots. That is what I'd consider a viral video. That video, how often, how, it's not every day that you see somebody being able to do that, those tricks, let alone a kid who looked like he was 10 years old. That's what made it fascinating. So that's a viral video. How about this one? We're going to look at this one right now. Oh my God, this guy is insanely good at, uh, like first things first, notice I use like the same description. Instead of insanely good at pool trick shots, oh my God, this, guy, this martial arts guy is insanely good in this weapons competition. Okay, so watch this. Here's an example of a viral video. Now, I've researched and found it. I've edited it and published it. So right now you're seeing um, 53 seconds. This video was like two and a half minutes when I found it. Okay, there we go. Someone in the audience with their cell phone taking a little clip of this guy doing this crazy stuff. Pretty cool that you can do all this stuff, right? But when you have a target audience of people that are into martial arts, they're going to respect that even more than just a typical person that doesn't even understand what's going on. So that's the key. Viral video, the beginning of the video when I first saw it, it had like 30 seconds of a buildup before this. Remember the lesson learned from the running video? I chopped it out. Chopped it right out, it starts, ah, it starts doing the thing around, right? So 1.9 million views, 4.4 thousand comments, okay? Um, and what's great about this one is I said, wow, this martial arts guy is incredibly good in this weapons competition. The people are just battling each other in the comments. That's when you know you got something good. They're like, oh, that's not really martial arts, and that's not really this, and the people are just, I love it. We love controversy. We talk all you want down there. You're making my video go viral. So that's what you're looking for. Okay, um, yeah, we, what we have here is the world champion baton twirling expert. <laughs> and 28 replies there. Look, okay, I've done kung fu for 30 years. Stuff like this is exactly why I lost interest in tournaments. Yeah, amazing baton routine, da da da. So it's not martial arts, it's a dance. So, you know, I love it. This, this made it go viral. It's, it's kind of cool. So, what kind of audience, if you were going to target an audience for this, what are some types of audiences, some people that might be interested in a video like this? Anyone taking martial arts? Karate, fitness, WWE, certain movies, Bruce Lee, MMA, mixed martial arts. See what I'm saying? UFC. Is UFC popular right now? The Ultimate Fighting Championship? Does UFC have celebrity stars? You could target every single star. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Uh, WWE, do they have a lot of celebrity stars? Yeah. Do those stars have millions of followers? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, all these things. Like, you just look and you kind of go, okay, the type of person. So what you're doing is you're grabbing a niche audience. And then you go, could we sell? If we had a niche audience of a list of 10,000 people on my email list that were interested in UFC, is there stuff we could sell them? That's what you got to be thinking. It's less to do about the video. It's more to do with, huh, if I could use a video like this, get people to opt in for something, if I had 10,000 people interested in martial arts, what are all things I could train? I could sell them martial arts training. I could sell them e-books. I could sell them DVDs. I could sell them martial arts gear. I could sell them this baton or whatever the thing is. 
to twirl, and a, a, l a lesson on how to twirl it. I actually don't even know what, what, what this is. I just, I just do this kind of stuff just for fun to see, see what happens. Two million views later, you're like, oh, it works. <laughs> and I did it again. It works, so I said, let me see. So somebody says, uh, I did it live in front of people. I just ran it again, and look, this time, three million views. Just doing it in front, in, on a webinar. Let's run it again, here's how I did it. And then three million views like nothing. 0. 0.0001 per view. And it's just, it's like, once you learn it, you've got a skill. I mean, once you learn it, you've got a skill. It's just easy. Look, self-defense, they could put a link in the description. I showed everybody what to do, how to set up a self-defense PDF. So self-defense, we were, we, were we were on a webinar and I was saying, what kind of offers would be good for this? And somebody's like, somebody said self-defense. We went to, we found, and found an offer uh, for self-defense and then in, and threw it up and that was it. It's, once you learn it, it's good. So these, these are more of an example of viral video. Oh, let me see real quick, actually. Did I lower it? No, still 52 seconds. You have a six million people reached with a video. That's how cool this strategy is when you, when you figure it out. Okay, let me close these down. <clears throat> okay, um, you know, and then I start using it for all kind of my own stuff. Then I just started teaching it. But like now, when I, when I promote even an event, 170,000 views to buy an event ticket, 106,000. You know, still, what does my, what does my um, page do when I upload a regular video with no ads? 957 views. Do you see? Let's call it normal and let's call it superhero. Normal video, 1,000 views. Superhero video, 3.3 million. That's the difference. The difference is when you learn how to do this. So like, look at this. Did you hear I'm giving away my custom wrap car? 216,000 views. Just like that. You can, grab, you can put 200,000 views on anything you want. Otherwise, look, 300, 300 views, nothing. That's the difference. You do not need to have a popular fan page. You can literally do this. So let's go into um, a couple of examples of uh, viral videos. Here is Prevention Magazine about two years ago. Now, this is around the same time that I did that running video. It's got a slow start, okay? But it's meet the world's oldest female bodybuilder. If you were to target women who are interested in bodybuilding, maybe weightlifting, maybe any kind of uh, fitness related activity, target women, especially target women a little bit older, because meet the oldest woman bodybuilder, you've got an audience in the millions. You've got an audience in the millions who are going to not only respect this video, they're going to respect this person, because if I'm a woman and I'm like in, I'm trying to get in shape for like a bikini thing or a weightlifting thing or a bodybuilding thing, and this is my role model. This is like, I'm passionate, right? I'm passionate. I'm waking up every day at 5 a.m. to go to the gym already as it is. I need every sense of motivation I could get in my life to get me to do that. I might have kids and all this. This, this woman here is my role model, the world's oldest female bodybuilder. Here's a little story. This is the key. You tap into people's passion, okay? 13 million views on this video. What I'm saying is you can replicate this. What I'm, what I'm proposing to you is that I think Prevention Magazine didn't pay a dime for advertising. I think they uploaded it to their fan page, they've got hundreds of thousands of fans or whatever, and it just went viral to 13 million without a boost. What I'm saying is, if, this, if you uploaded this to your own fan page with no fans at all, that I think you could do 13 million views on a video like this. I'm proposing that you could recreate this without needing a big popular business and fan page. So, I'm not gonna watch it, it's a long video, it's seven minutes, you could even use the technique about maybe chopping it down and 13 million views that they got on that. So, I noticed that there was a link in the description for them to click. I'm about to teach you a big secret. Um, has anybody here ever heard of Bitly? Yeah. Okay, it's a company that can shorten your links, right? Yeah. Do you guys know that if you ever see a Bitly link on the web, that there's a little secret you can do to see how many clicks it's had? Somebody else's link. So if you ever see a marketer using Bitly, you pop your eyes open a little bit because you can kind of you can sneak on them and you can kind of see what they're doing. Let's go. Let's let's sneak on this person here. Their little Bitly link. Here's how it works. Okay, their Bitly link right there, 18 Y R A R O, is um, that's their Bitly. Actually, let me pause this because the internet. Oh no, it's going to pause it because the internet might be slow. Their Bitly link um, forwards them to like their YouTube channel. Okay, Prevention Magazine YouTube channel. So they got a Bitly link. Their call to action, because remember, they're probably not paying. Don't leave an alarm clock. 
Okay, and then it plays that video, the remarkable story. Okay, they Prevention Magazine doesn't. Um, they're probably not paying for that video, so they have 13 million organic views. Since they're not paying, they don't need a strong call to action to make them money. But that's where they're missing out. Their call to action on all those 13 million video views is to just go to their YouTube channel like this. Probably to try to get subscribers. They're doing good. They've got thousands of subscribers. They could be selling. They could be getting members. They could be getting leads. They could be doing, if prevention, if I went to Prevention Magazine right now, one of the first things I would do is I would say, pay me $50,000 and I'm gonna come change all this for you. Pay me 100 grand, I'll change all this for you. I'll get you all set up. Because what we're marketers, we understand how to convert. We understand traffic and conversions unlike anybody else. Become a pro at this stuff. So they got their bit.ly links, and they're just sitting there like trying to drive people to, to, to this website. Well, when you see a bit.ly link like this, all you do is you add a plus symbol to the end. Okay? Add a, add a, just add a plus symbol. That's it. Just a plus sign to the end. The first link forwarded us to, uh, the first link forwarded us to YouTube. You add a plus symbol, it forwards us to stats to see all the stats on their link. You do it to any bit.ly link you see on the web. Now, <clears throat> we're able to now see how well and how effective this viral video was at driving traffic. Okay? So this bit.ly link on Facebook, that's really the stat we're looking at. It's 52,009. So they got 100,000 total clicks, but the one that we care the most about is, is the one from the Facebook video. 52,000 clicks. Clicks. I don't know what strategy you know of that you can get 52,000 clicks. Um, I've bought clicks before. If you go buy traffic, an average price to pay on a decent traffic source is like a dollar per click. That's like an average size. That's like $52,000. But you would never spend $52,000 to drive people to a YouTube, basic YouTube channel. If you get really good at clicks, really good, I was getting clicks when I was selling t-shirts to passionate audiences. I was getting clicks for 25 cents a piece and I was good. And I was converting them like crazy. So what's that? That's like $12,000 to get that same amount of clicks. Nobody's going to spend $12,000 to get some clicks versus a video like this, getting it going viral on Facebook, get that many clicks, thousand bucks maybe. So if you're good, $50,000 in clicks. If you're really good, like I was, where I was making money, $12,000 for those clicks. When you learn this strategy, you might be doing $1,000 for that amount of clicks. Crazy. I mean, it, it's insane. Like, you could get to the point where you're spending a penny a click, okay, for actual targeted people. That's the power of this. You can reverse engineer people's stuff. Now, <clears throat> what I want to show you is something people might not think to notice about this graph. This stat right here, March of 2015, okay, total clicks, right? And see how it's a big spike? But then look at over here, July 2015, total clicks, 21,000. So here's what happens. This is what you call the evolution of a viral video. The video comes out initially and it spikes and it's everywhere. Then it dies off. Most videos, the majority of them that you guys are gonna do, they die off at that point. They don't get more lifespan. But like one out of five, they, they rebirth. As long as you're kind of kind of still nurturing them, and here's what happens. They go down to no, like basically nothing. Look at this. It was doing tens of thousands of clicks on this link, and then it went down to nothing. Thousand clicks. Nothing. Then, ramp back up. And then nothing. And then look, it starts to ramp back up a little bit. And it might even ramp back up more, who knows? The thing is, is this is how it works. This is the evolution of a viral video. What happens is a video goes viral, you're boosting a video. It's gonna have a lot of exposure while you're boosting it. As soon as you pull back your ads, it might die off. That's okay. Drip, drip on it a little bit, and then a few months later, it might pick back up. And when it picks back up, it's all organic. It's just all free. And look, at all this right here was unexpected. Imagine you got a video you're done with. Three months later, next thing you know, you basically did just as much volume for free from Facebook. Your video goes from 2 million views to 5 million views three months later when you're least expecting it. That is what makes this strategy more epic than anything else. How many times have you been on YouTube and you've seen a video like, like surging and you look at the date and it was published in like 2010? It's just surging. It's because it got it resurfaced. It usually resurfaces because like some other big Facebook fan page or whatever shared it. Some big Facebook fan page just shared your video or something. I don't know where, some celebrity, Joe Rogan, shared the thing and it said, this guy's an idiot twirling batons or whatever. <laughs> Start up a whole conversation, next thing you know, surge. Right, that's what happens. So that's the gold mine. That's the second wave, that's the gold mine. Wave one is the initial, you're paying for that wave. You're forcing wave one. 
and then it kind of dies off. And wave two, if you get that, it's free, it's just money. So an example is, um, like you might pay for like three million views on a video, and then check back a year later, and you're like, it's got six million views. And you hadn't been running ads to it at all. All of those extra views were just free, kind of dripping in Facebook, dripping in YouTube. That's what you want to get. So you can reverse engineer. Whenever you see links, put a plus sign, you can see. 50,000 clicks off of a video like that. This is the potential we have our hands on. You master the strategy. Okay, let's go. Uh, that's an example of a video. Let's go and let's do, um, let me show you some sources of where you can get videos, okay? Let's go to some sources. Now, first things first, obviously Facebook. When you're in the Facebook news feed, you're gonna start seeing videos that are gonna be right there. I'm gonna show you when you, see, actually I'm gonna see it real time, we're gonna see if we can find one. When you're on Facebook, and you're scrolling through, let's see if I find a video. Um, it'll start auto-playing if I find it. Okay, so let's see. We might not find one. You never know when Facebook's gonna, Facebook's showing me a lot of pictures of us here today. <laughs> we'll see, every once in a while they show you. Um, it's all right for us to take even a little bit of time. There's a video, but it's not really a viral video. This is just a guy posting a video. So let's try to find, Billie Jean, let's try to find one where um, the odds of us finding one, I don't know how, how high it is for us to find this. Let's try to see if we, see if we randomly, there's another one, but it's a, it's a link. When you start watching a lot of videos, they'll start showing you more. Lately, I have not been watching videos. A lot of affiliates, a lot of Techonomics affiliates in here. Uh, you can have the play button as a thumbnail, just not on ads. So the question is, the question is, like, we just saw one that had a play video. If you, a play button, if, you have a, if, you're, if you're running ads, if it's, if it's not a real video, if it's like a link with a play button, you can't have that. That's something that they'll ban your ads for. I don't know if we're going to find one here, um, but I can show you, like, I'm, I'm going to go maybe, like, 30 more seconds. I just, like, sometimes like doing stuff in real time. The best is um, when people share video. Oh, found one. Okay. So here's a video, it's a live video, so it's not, as, uh, it's not as relevant, but I wanna point out something about it. Nick, is this Nick's video? Nope, Nick shared Gary Johnson's video. So this is what it's gonna look like when people are scrolling through the feed and they see your, the, bull, the billiards pool trick shots one, they're gonna see Nick Sternberg shared, you know, Chris Records video, and then it's, or whatever page video, billiard, billiards video, and it's gonna play the video like this and it's gonna have the fan page right there, and see how it's gonna say like page? That's how you're gonna get some likes too. So that's what it's gonna look like. It look, uh, the video auto plays on silent and it's shared by somebody. That's where the social exposure is gonna come from. So Nick is sharing Gary Johnson's video, so Gary Johnson doesn't have to pay for that. And right now, if I press likes, that is gonna give it a little social engagement. If I share, if I comment, all that's gonna make this thing go a little bit more viral. We'll see if we can find one more that's an actual uh, that one wasn't, I don't think. You're always looking for shared. See, Paul Gardner posted a video. When you post a video, it's not as big. You're looking for shared. And it starts auto-playing. And if we don't, you guys get, but you guys get the point. It's not like, see, these are links. Yeah, it's just a sponsor. That's an ad, by the way. Um, you're really looking for when it says shared. That's the big, that's the big thing. No, sponsored videos. Anyways, if I don't see sponsored, a lot of people are running sponsored videos, or maybe Facebook's showing me them now. Uh, nope, this is him, um, his own video. We're almost there, though. So anyways, that, that's really what it looks like. I guess I haven't been watching many videos lately, so I'm not seeing, but you know, like people sharing viral videos all the time. So next time you're here, we're just gonna pretend one is, um, is Jim. I was gonna show you one, we're just gonna pretend. Or maybe I go back to the Gary Johnson one. Is this one shared? No, that's Russell Brunson live. It's better when I could share you funny ones. Shared? No, sponsored. Jeez, he's sponsored. Uh, Facebook just showed me sponsored videos now. Okay, so anyways, when you're scrolling through your news feed, you will see a video that auto plays and it'll be some weird viral video of cats or whatever and it'll say whatever, so and so shared that. When you see it, there's a little button you can press, and that's what I'm gonna show you. I'll just go back to uh, Gary Johnson's, because that was the closest one. 
No, I can't. Dang. All right, we'll just show you on what it would look like on a regular post. Okay, so when you see something, when you're going through and you see a post that you want to, that you see as a viral video that you want to promote, um, there's a way to save it. You guys have to choose the save link button. I wish I could find one. It's so much better to use a real example. I'm just not seeing any viral videos. <laughs> like the one day I don't see a viral video. Tomorrow I'm going to go on Facebook and it's going to be all I see in my news feed. <laughs> let's just pretend. Let's just pretend this was a viral. Let's just pretend this was one. What is that? Well, yeah, I mean, you, c you can. Um, I can do it like that. Like I could do like, um, let's do like cat or whatever and then do videos. And it'll probably show like something. There's a bunch. Look at all those. More videos. More videos. They, but they show them kind of weird. Like they have their own search engine. They're not like the full newsfeed one. So anyways, let me just show you what, what it looks like. When you see a video in your newsfeed, let's just take any one of these and pretend that, um, that, it's a, that it's a viral video. So you see what to do. Okay, let's take this picture. Let's pretend that was a viral video you saw. Click this right arrow up on the top. And then right there is going to be a little thing that says save video. Okay, you click the little right arrow, and you can do it from your phone too. So we're just going to pretend that was a video. Okay, and then you click save video. Okay, now once you start saving stuff, there's going to be this folder over here that you can click on saved on your on your uh, left side, and you can see stuff that you've saved. Okay, you can see links you've saved, videos you've saved. So look, I've saved 121 videos, products I've saved, photos. So this little thing on Facebook, people don't realize this. This is what you want to do. You want to use this tool. Every time you see a viral video that's got millions of views, hit the right arrow and press Save Video. Unfortunately, I didn't see one live for you. But let's go over here to Videos. Really, save anything you want. If you guys see something cool, you're just like, hey, that, that was cool. Save it. Get in the habit. It's so like, look at this right here. Saved. This might be the coolest thing ever. OK, I saved this. Let's, let's take a look at it. There's an example of a viral video. I saw that in the news feed. And I thought to myself, anyone who has any interest in golf at all is going to love this video. Does that have wow factor? Like, it's impressive, right? Almost to the point where you're going, that's fake. Right. Right? Your first thought, and that's kind of a good viral video. People always think it's fake. Okay? So this video right here, this video, so what I want to tell you is that this is research. When you see videos, all you do is you right click and you press save. You're going to develop a saved list of videos that could always work for this. Doesn't mean you use them all, but you're going to click save list. So let's talk about this one for a minute. Golf. If we wanted to run ads to this, what are some examples um, in the golf niche? What are some examples of audiences or niches or anything that we could advertise to? So of course, we choose golf. What are some other types of things of people that would love this video and eat it up that are golf related? Well, let's say in the golf niche, like in the golf niche. So I did the word golf. So, so think of, think of golf-related stuff. What are some interests? What are some things? If somebody likes what page, they might like this. Well, not necessarily waste management. They're just a sponsor. Close. I want, I want to, we're going to get specific. I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing. So here's golf. I'm hearing you guys go way out here. Stay in golf. Inside of golf, there's 100 different things. Golf club. So, the go, so equipment. So there's golf equipment. There's all kinds of golf equipment, right? Yeah. So golf equipment. What else? What else are people interested in? Oh. Clothes. So golf clothing, golf equipment. What else? Tournaments. So how many tournaments are there a year? Dozens, right? Every single tournament is, is popular. What else? Players. Like who are some example stars? Tiger Woods. Like you, so you take Tiger Woods, and anybody who, who follows Tiger Woods is probably has an interest in a video like this, right? So you got tournaments, equipment, clothing, players. This is how you dissect a niche. So what you do is you're basically saying, I'm not just going to go advertise golf. I might do that. 
but I'm actually going to get there and, and advertise every single player, make a list of all the players, put them in one audience, make a list of all the different golf equipment, put it in another one, make a list of all the different golf clothing in another one, golf tournaments in another one. This is how you're going to kill it. Take a video like this. We might even use this video right now, just as an example. You take a video like this, you advertise to all of this golf niche, and then what you do is you basically market it straight to all these people interested in golf. Now, if I can figure out who this person is, like if I look at this and go, who is this person, then I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna give them a shout out because I don't wanna use their video without giving them a little props. But if it was just like somebody in the audience at a, at a high school golf tournament that goes, oh my God, look what has happened, you can't even figure out anything, then I'm just gonna upload it. But if I ever can give somebody credit. Now, if this is like Jimmy Kimmel and it's a segment of his show with like a popular musician on it or something, I'm not gonna use that at all. That's gonna be direct copyright. If this is, Monday night's NFL game and some crazy highlight happened and it's got NFL on it and stuff like that, I'm not going to bother using that because that's, I can, first of all, you know we could all get away with it. I mean, for, the internet's so big, you can kind of get away with anything you want, but you're not going to hear me from the front of this stage say to go get away with stuff, you know? <laughs> so some of you are probably risky enough, you just don't care and you're going to do it anyways. My advice uh, always will be Make sure that you're not infringing on anybody's stuff, okay? We would never endorse you to do that. So find videos that are a little bit more generic in nature, kind of stuff you see on America's Funniest Home Videos, stuff like that, a little ho homemade stuff, um, stuff like that. Uh, two quick questions. One, like on this, um, Arnold Palmer recently passed away. Be really good just to tag into that because there was so much news about him. Is that, would that be a strategy when someone does something bad or dies or anything like that. Okay, really so, tap into so that. Let, let's talk about that. Would it be a strategy to capitalize on something like that? There is a strategy for that, and that is called a trending event. It's not necessarily somebody's death. Uh, it could be. It's, it could be anything. A trending event. There's always going to be something that everybody's talking about and that, in that moment. And a death is an example. Another example might be like going back to UFC. There might be, oh my God, did you hear about the fight last night? Did you see that knockout kick? Did you see... You know, Ronda Rousey got roundhouse kicked and she got knocked out and blah, 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 blah. The whole internet's talking about that. That doesn't mean you can use copyright footage of Ronda Rousey getting knocked out, but you do know the whole world's talking about this. If I can insert something right there in front of that audience, it's going to go viral. So yes, trending uh, items of any kind are always a great strategy. You just got to figure out how to make sure you get something that's usable and get it there fast. As soon as something happens, you know, we're all consumers of the news. We're all consumers, right? We hear something. Instead of being a consumer, what if we were a business owner? When we hear trending event, what if you could train your mind to go, oh my God, if I put this on Facebook and get people sharing it, I could explode. Learn to take trending news. Why don't you be the one breaking the news? And you could break it faster. Because when a news organization breaks the news, they're just gonna upload it to their fan page and say, oh, did you hear about this and that? They're not gonna pay for it. We can go there and we can compete with major news outlets. We can compete with Huffington Post. You know, I, I, I saw a video that got, I saw a video that came out and I was like, Huffington Post broke the story. And my first thought was, well, they're going to get all the views. My second thought was, they're only going to get organic views. If I go in there and slam this video out really, really fast, I can get, and I have capitalized in a way off of death. I don't try not, I try not to monetize death so much. There's a conflict there. I don't know. It's a, it's a personal feeling maybe. Um, but when Paul Walker from Fast and Furious uh, passed away, I grabbed a little uh, clip of two, two video clips, put them together, two little tributes, made a little tribute myself, ran it out to audience of Fast and the Furious and Paul Walker, and the thing did like 12 million uh, impressions uh, in like three days. Uh, I did another one for um, Nelson Mandela. I mean, you know, even if you're not selling something, it's a great opportunity to practice. Yeah. Practice that. We have more questions, okay? Uh, we're good right here. So I was curious, how, uh, I, for your feedback on this, Facebook doesn't really curate the videos much, whereas YouTube has an entire like, infrastructure that will literally remove things almost the, the second they go up if they're off. What I'm hearing is, is there's a lot of people who make their living on YouTube. They're YouTubers and they have subscriptions and they make their living from it. And what I've been hearing is people take their videos, put them on Facebook. Facebook has no way to you know, basically connect the two. And so there's a lot of people who are saying their revenue source from YouTube is getting ganked into Facebook. Is there anything that you're familiar with in that or could you speak to that in some sure. level? <clears throat> yeah, so first of all, I have respect for the hardworking people that create their own content. For example, I would consider this, I'm, you know, six, seven, eight hours of me 
giving, giving value to everybody here, this hard work. Obviously, if somebody just grabbed this and bootlegged it and threw it all over the internet, that takes away from the impact product we're creating. It happens to everybody. It happens to musicians, happens to movies, happens to, uh, to everybody. Um, so I have respect for those hardworking people. In no way am I suggesting to go to some YouTuber that makes a living off of creating content and go take their videos and put them on, uh, on Facebook. It will happen. We live in a day and age where literally you can download a Chrome extension and you could basically rip any video off the internet and do anything you want with it and there's very little policing capabilities. Who's going to police the internet? So what happens is YouTube and other things have this auto-detecting software where if you go to YouTube and say, I'm an artist, here's my proof of whatever, and then they'll auto-detect your music or they'll auto-detect stuff like that and they'll do their best. But there's only so much they can do. Um, I'm not proposing that we go black hat and we steal people's good content. What I'm saying is there's a level down of content, which is just the random viral videos, the same videos that every news outlet's going to uh, upload to their channels. If news, take somebody who's a YouTuber. The news isn't just going to upload their video to, the, to their news and pretend like, oh, we don't even know who this person is. Check out this cool video. They're going to give credit. They're going to say, here's this person's YouTube channel. Go visit their YouTube channel. We saw them post about it. And then the news is going to play the video. In essence, the news jacked the video. But the news gave them credit. So that's the first step. If you know somebody, it's always best to give them credit. It won't hurt you. You might think, oh, well, then everybody's going to click on their link. Who cares? You're using their stuff. They deserve it. So you always give people credit. Um, but I'm saying you could use more generic videos. When you watch the news, the news is a good source, by the way, for viral videos. Watch the morning news or whatever, and they'll be like, oh, did you hear about this video, this Halloween video, da 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 And they'll break the news, usually a few days old. They'll break the news, and, and like everybody on the world is watching this right now. So what's going to happen in all the, the, by the water cooler at every job in the world, everybody's going to be like, hey, did you see that video? No. Oh, let's go look at it. You know what they're going to do? They're going to go just like Google it, or they're going to go, um, they're going to go on Facebook, or they're going to go on YouTube, or they're going to go somewhere and try, I can't remember what it was called, and they're going to go try to find it. It could be yours. It could absolutely be yours. So um, let's do this. Let's do, let me show you a few more things. Let's take some more questions, okay? Um, and I might just use this video right here. Okay, that'll be a good one. But let me show you a couple more. These are just videos I've saved. As you see videos like this, okay? Here's pen, pineapple, apple pen. This is like some viral video I saw, and I just saved it. I don't think I would use it. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy, right? I have a pen. I have an apple. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, this guy's got singing skills. Uh, but this thing went crazy viral, right? So there's an example. Now, this is called a, this is like the, uh, the concept of a video meme. This what happens, you have a video, and then you have room for text above and beyond it. You don't even, so like the text stays st still the whole time. It says, this will be your new ringtone. That's the hook. The hook is that text stays there, and it says something funny, and then you watch the video. These, these kind of videos right here, very, video memes, very, very popular. If you ever see a meme, a meme is like, it'll be a picture with some text on it, very funny. These video memes, these go viral. If you ever see this stuff in your newsfeed, start saving it. Um, golf is awesome, golf boarding, best thing ever. See, these are all videos I just seen I saved. This is, um, this is actually one of my friends. So this didn't go viral. I saved it because I was like, one of my friends is in Hawaii and you can rent these things instead of golf carts. So I saved this because I, got, I came up with an idea that I'm going to go to Hawaii and film a sales video on one of these things and make it go viral. So that's what that one was. Uh, these little kids are incredible athletes. This is called a compilation video. This is a type of video. Little kids. See, they're giving props there. YouTube Raven. See, they're giving the little shout out there where it's coming from. given the names, given the shouts. So like what they're doing is they're just grabbing clips off of YouTube, putting together their own little compilation video, and they're giving YouTube slash Enzo Lee, YouTube, YouTube slash this and that. <coughs> okay, so clearly the world loves kids, and especially kids that can do incredible stuff. So what this person did was they put together a basic compilation of these things, uploaded it to, you, uploaded to Facebook, starts going viral. This is the idea. Uh, so another type of thing you could do is rather than do one person doing an incredible thing, I showed you the guy doing the billiards thing, or the billiards thing, the guy doing the martial arts thing, that you could take a quick five-second clip of each one of those, and you would have two clips 
of, of two people already. And then if you put together like 10 of those things, you got a compilation video, and you're going to say like, you know, the, uh, check, you know, there's a whole channel called People Are Awesome. And it just, they make videos like this all the time. People are awesome. And they just make compilations. Those things go viral. Those things go mega viral. In fact, I have one. Um, I uploaded one called People Are Awesome. I never did much ads to it, but 335,000 uh, views. Same thing. And I said, after watching for 10 seconds, I had to watch the whole video. The same kind of thing, compilation. I put together uh, a few little things. This kind of stuff people love. And it auto plays, so there's no talking. You just hear it, and then you click on it, and then you start doing, you start hearing it. But you could watch this stuff in the newsfeed all day long. So people are doing amazing stuff. This is another type of content. So what are we looking at? We're looking at like niche specific content. We saw somebody doing golf tricks, okay? We're looking at like compilation videos of kids doing things or of people doing things. You're looking at, you gotta, you gotta like, think of any niche. You can actually go specifically. Let's say you wanna be in the fishing niche. You know how easy it would be to search the internet and find videos that are just unbelievable of people doing something crazy fishing? And then you load them up and then you have some sort of fishing call to action and you kill it, you slay it. So this is what you wanna do. You wanna find stuff like this. Um, so you do, this is the research phase. That's why I call it the research phase. That's why I'm saying one technique is go here, Okay, so like political stuff, smoke, smokables. This, this is the kind of thing now, a lot of people think this stuff is controversial, but I literally saw just somebody, in my, somebody that's one of my friends shared this, so some other video, how to make a pipe. Essentially, you know, people are going to smoke pot out of there. How to make a pipe out of a banana. Now, I don't smoke pot, but I thought if, you, if this is real, if this is real, this is a, I can target uh, keywords in Facebook of people that are interested in marijuana all day long. <laughs> now, they actually get step by step. Now, here's what I would do. If, I wouldn't just do this for the sake of doing it, and I might not even use this video. This video is professionally done. I don't know that I would rip this guy's video, personally. Some of you guys might take a risk on that. I, I don't want to. I don't want to have a reputation of doing that. You know what I do? This looks simple enough. I'd honestly just do a homemade video. I, I, we've all got pot smoking friends. So, some of your eyes in here, you know, you might be the friend, okay? So I'm just saying, how hard would it be to come up with a banana and an iPhone, okay? You know, you could just go like make a little video. Just the video could be like, hey guys, listen, I'm gonna take this banana. I'm gonna in the next one minute or two minutes, I'm gonna turn it into a pipe, and then we're gonna smoke out of it. Show you guys what's up. And then do it. It would be fun to do anyways. And you don't need a fancy video. Those little low budget videos with the iPhone go just as viral. And then you know what you do? You give them a PDF that says, hey, uh, and then in the video you say, in the description I put a link for the step-by-step -step instructions exactly how to do this. You guys can not only do it with a banana, we teach you how to do it with an apple, we teach you how to do it with a kiwi, we teach you how to do it <laughs> whatever, right? And then, you know how many people would click that link and get that thing? Would get that PDF? Now you got a list of a bunch of people smoking weed, right? <laughs> like legally, right? They got their cards. And then, which by the way, on a side note, you would have to average, uh, advertise 21 and above for anything like this. And also on a side note, when you advertise um, things like this, alcohol, uh, marijuana, you always do have a chance of getting the ads blocked and banned, okay? That should go without saying. You can do it kind of fun and maybe you'll get away with it, but you, could, you might get a, even an ads account banned for messing around with, because weed is not fully legalized in the world. Me personally, um, I do not click on the things unless I can figure out what's going on. So um, I'm thinking I'm not the only one in the world. And what I'm noticing lately is if they're captioned like that, you know, so I get up at five in the morning and I don't want to wake the household up. If they're captioned and I can read what's going on and I'm intrigued, then I will click it. So the question I have is, you know, what is your experience with this captioning and how do you get that captioning done? And then um, would you recommend to people to perhaps take a video that's not captioned and then go ahead and caption it? Or what you just said, which is begin fresh. And then, like I said, I just wanted you to speak to this captioning because that's been a major thing for me, bothering to get into stuff that otherwise I would just keep going right on by if I can read it. Yeah, so we live in a world, great question. And yes, that's important for us to cover. We live in a world where most content is now consumed from our phones 
not from our computers. So no matter what this looks like, what we're really seeing, we're not seeing all the stuff around it. On our phone, we're just seeing the video like this. When somebody is at work, they're not paid to goof around on their phone, okay? So, but they do, because it's just how people are. Um, but they can't do it out loud, okay? Most content, believe it or not, is consumed quiet. Facebook knows this, which is why Facebook autoplays them on quiet anyways. They don't want to make annoying sounds every, every time you're scrolling through. So are subtitles important? Are closed captioning important? Plus, we live in an environment where you also want to be able to help people who maybe um, are deaf. Yes, the answer is yes. There's several ways to do it. Um, one, you can pay an outsourcer. You can find somebody on a site called upwork.com, U-P, like the word up and the word work.com. You can go in there and you can do like all kinds of services. Transcription, you can take a video that's maybe a two minute video, you can transcribe it for nothing, and you can have them put text like this. Another thing you could do is like the video meme, you can put, see how it says this will be your ringtone? It could say, it could say something like, um, download the full instructions, because they're on the top, uh, in, in the link in the description. You know, get the full seven step instructions in the link in the description. Just that alone would be like, somebody's like, I don't have time to, to watch, I can't listen to this, so they'll just click and they'll just get the instructions. You could actually drive traffic to your link instead of having them read it on the screen and write it down. But then yes, you could always also use this for subtitle space. If you put a black border around it like this, you could actually put words on there. And it's not hard to do subtitles yourself. Um, Facebook also does allow you to do closed captioning on your videos when you upload them. So when you upload a video, Facebook allows you to put in um, text. And they'll, they'll say from second zero to second five, put this text. Okay, then it disappears, second, second six to this. You can put text on all your stuff on Facebook and on YouTube. So there's lots of ways to do it. Is it important? Yes. But what's more important is ROI. So really what I would do is I would say like, you know, hey, uh, or just download the full instructions right now. Now you're, you're busy, you're with whatever, you're like, oh, I can just click this and get it all, read it later. Download the full PDF and read it anytime you want. You're more likely to do that, quickly throw in your email address, you got it all and we just got a lead. Um, so yes, absolutely. So this right here, there's, there is a big market in the cannabis industry. It's exploding right now, especially as states legalize it. It's exploding. I have friends in this industry that are making uh, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars that uh, this time, a couple years ago, they were deadbeat potheads, and now they're wealthy potheads. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's just, there's, um, I've got a friend uh, who, don't want to give away his entire everything, but um, a couple of you know him, and he, has a, he had a pipe. He just, made, he just did $100,000 in sales selling a pipe uh, on Shopify. The pipe was very basic, it was very, very basic. I think it only cost a couple bucks for the pipe. And it basically was a pipe that you could smoke weed out of, and it came apart like magnetic. It came apart into like three pieces, making it really easy to clean. Pipes are hard to clean and stuff like that. Just clean it up really quick and everything. And it was just very magnetic, slapped together, small. You can put it anywhere, stuff like that. He sold a uh, $100,000 worth in like a month, okay? Um, and then of course his video was a little over the top and it got blocked by Facebook, it got flagged. So they cut it. But the idea is a video like this would be an ideal transition into accessories. Now very, very cool accessories in, the, uh, in, in this industry. Just an example. I will say with another rule of, uh, of caution that marijuana and, and, and alcohol related stuff and uh, guns and survival stuff, you, you always run a risk with this industry, but it's popular. So I save it. I see a video of somebody turning a banana into a pipe. I'm going to click the save button. Okay. Autistic boy weeps with joy at a Coldplay gig. So same kind of thing. Here's, here's an autistic boy. Um, I save this one and he's just so happy, but he's like crying and it pulls on your heartstrings. So this is like something that like you see this kid and it pulls in your heartstrings, okay? Now, for me, I say this because my son, my five-year-old is autistic. So for me, it was like actually remi it remind his facial expressions remind me of my son. So to me, I was somebody that pulled on my heartstrings. I shared the video, just shared it. Didn't want to download, rip it, didn't want to take time. I shared it. Then it got like just huge engagement just on my own personal profile. Something like this. Um, and notice also the captioning, okay? Uh, something like this, you could advertise uh, easily to uh, autistic keywords. You would target groups like Autism Speaks, Autism Walks, Autism, stuff like that. Any parent watching this is going to basically burst into tears watching it, and then um, they're going to share it. 
you never want to capitalize on, you don't want to be too much of a capitalist where you're just like, you know, hey, for the next 20 people that watch this video, I'll sell you, you know, it's 5% off this necklace. But what I would do is I'd probably give them something for free, very autism related, and build an autism community. Now I got this autism community, serve value, raise money, and then also um, offer monetized things. But every time that I monetize things, I'd probably also say, you know, we're taking a percentage of all the revenues and giving it to this uh, philanthropic benefit. So you can take something you're passionate about. I know that a lot of my life is going to have to do with autism because when you're raising a child with autism, you spend so much time researching it and then naturally you're going to support causes that are autism driven. So for me, creating a video like this, sharing a video like this, even if I didn't get paid, I would like to do it. And then if I can get, if I can make it profitable, it just gives me more resources to make it bigger. And that's how you have to think is that like, well, I don't want to profit on that. Well, then the video is only going to get a thousand views. But as soon as you can figure out a way to make an ROI, you can get 10 million views. Um, but also I'd be a little cautious about cold play. Cold plays in it, so I'd be a little cautious. Um, anyways, tons of stuff here. Just showing you guys examples. To go back to your YouTube, and I see a couple of questions, so you guys get ready for those. To go back to your YouTube example, here's a guy um, who does videos on YouTube of his kid, and he puts After Effects on him, of his kid playing in the playground, and turns him into like real scenes. He's very popular. I think it's called Action Kid. Our action movie kid. Oh, look, look, he's just on his crib. <laughs> okay, so now this is an example. Uh, going back to the YouTube thing, action movie kid dad or action dad or whatever the thing, guy's channel is, he puts time and effort into it. Here is a company called Movie Pilot, fairly big company, um, and they basically took his video and they put their own um, top and bottom on it. They took his video. I don't even know if they're giving him credit. You can maybe see in the end if they're giving him credit, but. He just does crazy stuff. No, they didn't, they didn't even give him credit. So personally, I think that's a little. OK, oh, yeah, really, they hooked him up. Yeah, so. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying, is that Movie Pilot is actually a large company. And they ripped this guy's hard work in YouTube. It's going to happen. And is that taken away from uh, Action Movie Kids revenues a little bit? Yeah, it's going to happen. I would be a lot nicer about it if I was going to use something like that. I would definitely give them more credit. I mean, the, the guy deserves a lot of credit for doing something so great. So, but that, that kind of thing, that would go mega viral. I mean, people see that. They love it. Target parents. That's all you do, target parents. It's like, oh, I wish I could do that with my kids. And then you do a little thing that you give them something for free. It says, hey, would you like to, did you know you can do this as a beginner? Here, here's a 10-step PDF showing you exactly how to do this yourself. And now you're getting people going. You could even target parents who are into Photoshop, parents who are into, uh, you know, uh, iMovie, parents who are into video making, parents who are into this and that, then they're even more of a target market. Okay, let's do a couple of questions. Uh, we got the mic over here. Let's do a couple of questions. Uh, we'll kick it right here. All right, so just to clarify, you can save these videos and then um, modify them and post them onto your fan page? Is that how it works? I'm like, I'm, I don't yeah, use so you, Facebook so you can lot. research and find videos. All right. There's going to be a level of copyright infringement you want to be cautious of. There's a lot of videos that are going to float out there anyways. There's going to be people that don't care. I'm trying to make sure we care. I think that's the right thing to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can, I'm basically saying, number one, create your own uh, video with you. All number right. two would be like create compilation videos or stuff like that where you're still in the creative mode. So if anybody here has any video editing skills, might as well just create your own. You're going to make them better anyways. Like That's kind of like a compilation yeah. with, with some things. Or number three would be uh, use somebody else's video. If you can give them credit, give them credit. If you absolutely don't know, then I, I didn't know that baton guy, twirling guy, and yeah. I didn't know the pool kid. All right. So that's what I'm saying. Find them, and then what you're going to do is you're going to publish them. Right now, I'm going to publish them, place an ad. That part's actually really fast. The hard part is really identifying where do you find these things and which ones actually work. That's why I'm spending time on this. So is there another? Let's do more questions while we're here. Just, I'll follow wherever the hands, are, wherever he goes. Hold on, wait till I get a thumbs up. Um, go for it. Um, at the last conference um, in August over at Desert Ridge, um, something stuck to me that you said. You said uh, a lot of people, a lot of us, emphasize on our ads, and we should emphasize more on the actual targeting of the ad. Um, one thing I've noticed is that when I went into targeting, um, let's say I pulled up a, a specific niche, and it had 800,000 um, viewers or followers or um, customers, whatever. Um, and then I would apply another niche and it will go up to a million, we'll say. And then I'll, I'll apply a third niche and it will go back down to 800,000. Or I'll add another niche, instead of going back up, it'll kind of 
fluctuate up and down as far as your audience goes. Okay. Let me do this. One of, the, one of the next steps that I'm doing is to place these ads. I think that it's easier for me to show you that when I'm placing the ads. So if you don't mind maybe waiting five minutes on that answer, that's so specific. I could just show you how your numbers fluctuate when you place ads. We'll do that in just a minute. I'm not avoiding it. I just I think it's easier to show it. Okay, we're going to have another question over here. Wait one second. Oh, okay. Yeah, Chris, uh, you said like you build the communities like for autism or for the golf, you know, or the pool, like whatever you're going to promote. How do you categorize those or how do you reach back out and say, hey, I want to share this just with the people that are into golf? Do you have like a separate system that does that for you or are yeah. you just... Yeah, so, so let's take one of those. Let's say it was golf. What I'll do is my video, my fan page will be about golf, my videos... Well, that I'm advertising will be about golf, the viral videos. The call to action will be about golf. It'll either be for them to buy something directly, and then I'm focusing on golf buyers. I'm only dealing with people that bought. Or it will be give them something for free, and now I've got a golf email list that's not buyers. And then, so I'm either trying to just sell them something directly, or I'm trying to get them to join my list. But either way, it's golf, golf, golf the whole way through. And then if they join my list, the benefit is I can mail them golf offers every single day uh, for the next five years, 10 years. I mean, that's the benefit of an email list is you can just mail them forever. They may not, your open rates will go down over time, but you can advertise over and over and over to somebody versus getting them to buy something. They either buy it or they don't, and then you lose them. Um, so it's all golf. The benefit of being in one niche is that you're building an audience that you can sell related products to. Um, so somebody, somebody might come in and I might try to sell them a golf t-shirt. Well, let's say they buy it or they don't buy it. I can put the same design on a golf, on a mug. You can do all of that, yeah. So you can basically have like a golf, like once you build a big audience in that niche, you could do everything. You could have a golf community. You could have a forum and everybody's active and conversating there and it's getting Google ranked. You could have a golf Facebook group and say everybody chime in on the conversation. You can mail the whole list of all these golf people, say chime in on this. You can have um, a golf store on, on Shopify. You can have print on demand stores that sell golf related stuff. There's like this infinite potential inside of a niche like that. So it's kind of beneficial to stick in a niche. The problem is, you don't know which niche is going to work. So what I tell people in the beginning is just kind of go general, try a few different things. Um, I've tried a lot of niches, and sometimes the, the funniest little things work like crazy. I mean, I, I try niches I'm not even involved in. I've done scrapbooking <laughs> as a niche. Um, uh, I didn't do knitting um, sp specifically, <laughs> but I did something similar. Uh, yeah, I did, um, what, what was that niche? Needle, needle yeah, it was crochet. Crochet. I, mean, I did crochet. crochet. I didn't do knitting. I did crochet. I don't even know what it's called. I just looked at the numbers. There's a lot of women that love crochet. So I was like, hey, will they buy stuff? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. There's, there's, like, even the crochet niche was so funny. I was like, I could build an audience in crochet, and let me just see if I can convert them to a list. And I could. And I was like, let me see if I can sell them something. So um, I, I, I said, the sh I sold a t-shirt and I, came, I paid an outsourcer 20 bucks to design a graphic. It was like a ball of yarn with a needle. But you know a crocheting needle has like a hook? So I was like, hook, I could do a play on words. So I created a graphic and it said, um, it said, no, it said something like, um, gosh, I want to pull it up. It was, uh, it was a funny line. It was like, if crocheting burned more calories, I'd be a skinny hooker. <laughs> I think that was it. Yeah, women loved it. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what, what works. I just try stuff out and see if it works. So Chris, um, when you're building the audience uh, for a fan page, um, for bridge pages to kind of get that sequence going, uh, what's the benefit or what's the advantage of inviting those people that have liked the viral videos over to your page? Like what does it do for your reach? What does it do for the next viral videos or next post that you're doing? Um, yeah, so do you want to automate it too? Yeah, like, okay. It's going to sound crazy controversial that I say this, but I've, I've just, I don't really care about building up my fan pages, the, the audience. Right now, I could take, you could have a fan page of 500,000 fans. I would say that's pretty impressive. And I could have a fan page of zero. And I could beat you on, on engagement on a post. Zero to 500,000. So once you learn that you don't need the 500,000 people, that it's just a money game, it's just ROI. Sure, you're going to get more free views than I am. 
But are you really? Because I'm going to invest right niches and Facebook's going to reward me like five to one anyways. I'm going to end up getting, like you saw that video, Facebook gave my video 100,000 free views. That's more than they would have probably given you just for a regular upload. So the benefit of having a big fan page is that you can get a lot of basic traffic on it. But, and I'll even show you this, because this, I used to have big fan pages. Like, there's a Walking Dead fan club. We've done so many. I have 150 something fan pages right now. It's like, look, 234,000 likes. That's pretty good size, right? Uh, and we were getting these for penny, penny a piece. But look at the, look at the 500, so these are organic, no ads. 548 comments. Um, here's selling a hoodie. Uh, 1. Uh, you know, 1,200 shares. This is all organic, no, no cost. Selling hoodies, selling designs, get the hoodie or t-shirt. Um, 4.3 thousand, 9,000 shares. Um, this, is, this is, so the idea is this person will be watching The Walking Dead tonight, capitalizing on a very trending show and then just throwing a random link in the description that has nothing really to do with it. Get the hoodie or shirt, but then you get enough uh, clicks off of this and then using Teespring, last day to order, buy it now, and then just uh, my Sunday nights belong to the dead. You don't really use The Walking Dead or something like that and you monetize. And what you could do is you could sell these 40 bucks. Um, after, after basic ad spend and basic cost, you make like $20 a shirt. So you could basically make, you know, when you get a big organic audience, you could do this stuff all the time. What I'm saying is we have these. We have tons of organic. I mean, I have so many organic audiences, it's actually kind of like silly. I, for, I have so many, I don't even do anything with them. So look at this one, Bible scripture quotes. Look, 88,000 people talking about Bible scripture quotes. So I built a page here. On, I don't even manage these pages. They're all so old. Um, where is it? It's going to load. It's going to tell me fans over here if it, if it decides to load. Um, 138,000, right? 138,000 fans. <laughs> Look, the only thing I had Chris, shared Chris Record's video in 2014. Then I forgot about it. That's it. <laughs> I know, I'm getting more people. I got 349 new fans this week. I don't even know where they're coming from. <laughs> I just have all these fan pages, and I haven't even really cared about them. Um, I'm just sharing my own quotes. That's <laughs> <laughs> Bible scripture quotes, and then the quote is like totally business related <laughs> with branding. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, I, I experiment with all kinds of stuff. It's really easy to get fans, is what I'm saying. So, I, I don't know. Personally, it's controversial. I've tried it. At the end of the day, yes, who doesn't want free traffic? But you learn this strategy, you never need free traffic again. Okay. Um, real quick, have you had any issues uh, <clears throat> with uh, when, you, when you're advertising a video and you, your account's getting hacked so much that they start declining any card with your name on it? So Facebook wouldn't take a, a payment with a card with the specific name because they kept, keep hacking um, their account while they keep uh, advertising videos. Okay. The word hacking, I, I'm not so much, but I think, I, I think what you're addressing is a common problem, which is Facebook ads accounts can get banned. Okay. Uh, when, you sign up your, when you sign up a Facebook ads account, it's connected to your personal profile. So if Facebook bans that account for whatever reason, like maybe you were advertising the, the marijuana thing, it flagged it, Facebook banned your account. You're like, really? Your personal account is still up and running, your personal Facebook, but that ads account is banned. People get freaked out off of that. So here's the thing I'm going to tell you. I've had 14 ads accounts. Seven of them are completely banned and blocked. It's never once stopped me even for a day. So it's something you don't need to worry about. Um, well, it's good to be on the offense. It's good, to, it's good to anticipate it will happen. So what I did when I first started is I set up multiple Facebook ads accounts thinking, I'm, gonna, I'm pretty of an edgy guy. I'm going to test stuff. And sure enough, my test got my accounts banned. So, I mean, I did stuff. Like I promoted, multi, I, I did one ad. I said, watch, I'm going to promote this multi-level marketing company straight up and go get a bunch of reps inside of it. And I signed up like 38 reps directly into this thing, thousands of dollars in revenue generated. And then Facebook banned the whole account. Said, you can't advertise multi-level marketing company opportunities. Okay, I won't anymore. And I just left that account alone. And then I went to another one and started promoting JVZoo and ClickBank and affiliate offers. And then that account got banned. Then I went to another one and I promoted this picture of a, the video of a baby, uh, a full man in a, in a, in a, a full-grown man in a Halloween outfit dressed up as a baby. It was very scary looking. And then Facebook banned my account for that one too. I've had seven ads accounts banned. Um, pretty much all for very guessable reasons. When an ads account gets banned, you can't just add another credit card payment to it. They won't accept that. You have to create a full new ads account, and it has to have all new information on it with a new card. You can't just add a new card. They won't accept any new form of payment. 
So when an ads account gets banned, flagged, or whatever, you have to just move on from it. You can always email them like, hey, give me back my account. I learned my lesson. You know, I'll never do that again. I cleaned it up, blah, 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 blah. And they will maybe give it back to you. But meanwhile, set up a new ads account. What I did was I went to uh, a friend of mine, um, Steve, and I'm like, hey, are, do you have, you're not using your ads account. Can I set up, since you're not using it, can I set up an ads account under your profile? You just set it up and then add me as an advertiser and I'm good to go. So what I did is I had other people set up ads accounts that were never going to use them. They added me as an advertiser. And I even said, hey, I'll, I'll place a few bucks in ads to help promote your fan page. He's like, cool. It'll never affect him. And then uh, Peter did one for me, and my ex-wife did one for me. And I mean, I got like seven or eight friends. They just set, they just, I just set up the, the ads accounts on their account, but they added me as an advertiser. So when I log in, I get to just choose it right from my account. I never have to get their information, nothing. So all you have to do is go have other people set up an ads account, add you as an advertiser. You add your credit card payment. You're good to go. Make sure it's a new credit card. Don't use the same card that you used on the account that got banned. That, that card is now banned along with that uh, account. Same. Uh huh? The name is them. So, uh, like the, 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 oh, they're not going to track that. They're going to, they're going to, for the most part, track the, uh, like the billing zip code or something. Um, the name, there's so many common names. So, like, when I went to my ex wife, she set up the ads account, and then um, I just went to the bank. They said, hey, can I get a new checking account? And they just gave me a new checking account, and I transferred some money in. They gave me a temporary debit card, and I threw it up on there, and I was in business the next day. People get freaked out over this kind of stuff. Entrepreneurs, these are just regular problems in the life of an entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, it's like, what'd you do on Tuesday? Got my ads account banned. What'd you do on Wednesday? Got a new viral video with a new account. It's like, it's the life of an entrepreneur. <laughs> So you spent a lot of time talking about copywriting. Mm -hmm. Can you show us an example of one that is properly copyrighted for, for, um, for credit? Um, copyright infringement? Yes. Yes, OK. So yeah, I'll spend a minute. Let's do that real quick. Spend a minute. I'll give you an example of both. So we talked about Facebook um, as a source of viral videos. Another source of viral videos would be like YouTube. So I'll give you an example. Um, <coughs> If you were to go to YouTube and you were going to go to a popular YouTuber, somebody who's popular at doing kind of stuff, or go to a popular, go to um, the NFL's channel or something like that, those are obviously copyright. Shoot, my uh, internet is not working, unfortunately. Somebody wants to check on that for me? Okay, let me talk about it while it's getting checked on. So an example would be, um, I got a friend of mine, uh, Nice Peter, this guy named Nice Peter. He has a channel called Epic Rap Battles of History. What it is is him and his buddy, they dress up in like outfits and they get in front of a green screen and they add all these animations and they battle rap each other. But it'll be like, it'll be like uh, Thomas Edison versus Bill Gates or something. It'll, they'll do characters. Bill Gates versus Steve Jobs. And they battle rap each other. Well, this is, my, this is a friend of mine that's got, he's done very, very well on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not just going to go, those would go viral easily. I mean, they would go viral very, very easily. Um, might, as well, might as well show you really quick, like Steve Jobs versus Bill Gates. I'm not going to like, yeah, you could go look at these on your own time. There's, so, there's a whole channel full of them. This one here, four years ago, 113 million views. Do you think this would go viral if I posted it real quick? Of course it would. This is an example of what not to do. Even if I gave him proper credit, you wouldn't do that. Because look, he's making his income off this ad that's going to play in the beginning. Let's suppose that you're writing this a ad really plays, and YouTube gives him a cut of that. That's how he makes his income. And then you watch his video. And he does this whole show. It's very branded. His logo is up there. He basically creates this thing, and he's, he's dressed up. That's Peter. He's dressed up as Steve Jobs and his friends dressed up as Bill Gates. And they basically do subtitles, everything. This is an example of something that your first thought is, this will go viral, I'm going to use it. No, no, no. This is exactly what you do not want to do. Okay? Now, let's, let's do a basic search. Like, let's do, um, let's do, uh, oh my God, crazy cat or something. <laughs> you know? You could just do some wild searches. Like, unbelievable is a good word to search. So you just go through here, and then there's going to be some channels that are like legit, like this channel here, Zeus the Serval. This is like a full-blown, this, this woman has like a full-blown channel all about her cat. That's like a pretty branded thing versus this one up here, 
Uh, this looks like it's just like a homemade video of a cat, it does, you know? It looks like a crazy cat. Five videos. <laughs> yeah, you just look at all these, and it's like some of these, like, and then you look. See how this has 62 views? Let me zoom in. So see how this has 62 views? Even though they're saying this crazy cat ate, nearly suffocated, whatever, that's probably, nobody cares. It's 62 views. <laughs> it's probably not viral. 500 views, whatever. 14,000 views, 33,000, 32,000. So you're really, you're really just kind of trying to find something that's like, like funny cat compilations, 290,000 views. There you go. Yeah, cats versus laser pointers. Probably a compilation of that. You just do cat laser pointer. So let's see if it's branded. Okay, that's not really branding. Somebody's just, and now they're putting all kinds of pop-up things. Okay, they're just making a compilation video. See, purely a compilation video. I can't get the ads off, but it's not letting me close it. <laughs> Giving a cat massage. And then there's new cat videos every time there's like a question mark, or every time there's a light thing. And that cat's doing something. See, it's just a, this is somebody's homemade compilation video. Today, I'm Nicole DiDonato, live in East Town. And those details coming up. So anyways, blah, blah, blah. The, the cat video, and that's not even the funniest one. 290,000 views. Why? Because cats. Even if you make a decent compilation video, you can get views. This is an example. Homemade cat videos. There's really nobody to give credit to. They're just random cat videos, pictures of cats taken with a home phone. That's an exact example of what to use. Now, what I'm saying is take it a little bit further. You want to have a niche you want to be in. So if you're going to do cat videos, the niche you're going to be in is you're going to probably be in pet owners, even more specifically cat owners. Okay? You've got to think like this. Don't just do a cat video because it's sake of cats. Do a cat video, and the reason you want to do a cat video is to be able to sell stuff. Let's go to a print-on-demand site, and let's go over here to um, categories, and let's see if there's pets as a category. Pets. Cat categories. Um, so here's, here's an example of cats. We'll go to pets and cats. So here's an example of people that are capitalizing on the cat niche. Okay? Ugly Christmas sweaters. Meowy Christmas. Okay. If you have a viral video, what if you did something like, here's an example. What if you went to YouTube and did Christmas cats? I'll bet you there's a whole bunch of viral videos about cats like doing funny stuff with Christmas lights, Christmas trees, uh, dressed up in Christmas outfits. You can just grab like four or five of them, use a basic program like on, there's, on free on my Mac is QuickTime for Mac. You literally just drop in five clips and they're just automatically a compilation. Or you could use iMovie, or you could use an outsourcer. But what if I just did, what if I looked at this and said, you know what? Meowy Christmas. There's my monetization. I need a Christmas cats viral video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to target. Um, <clears throat> it's coming up to Christmas. I'm going to target women who uh, have interest in cats, and I'm going to do this viral cat video. And I'm going to basically say, um, uh, click here to get your get uh, click here to get our exclusive Meowy Christmas ugly Christmas sweater. Uh, you have to see it to believe it. And then they click that, and then they come here, and it sells for 27 bucks or whatever, 30 bucks, just like that. There you go. And 7,000 sold of this one. Um, 7,000 sold, probably an average of $10 profit. It's probably $70,000 in profit on that. On the first impact, we talked a whole thing about how to do this. Is that registering? Would it be worth it for me to spend $2,000 making a uh, Christmas cats video go viral? to sell them a Meowy Christmas thing that does $70,000 in profit? All day. Now, I'm not saying you're going to do that on your first one, but how cool would it be if you could do that? Like, how cool would it be if you could upload, a, a, create a quick little co cats compilation? Really, nothing copyright infringing. To answer the question on copyright infringing, does any of those cat videos look like they were? And even if somebody was, I would be like, uh, here's credit to somebody. What I would do is I'd just say, hey, get your own exclusive Meowy Christmas, ugly Christmas sweater. You have to see it to believe it. And then I would even buy a domain name that just says meowychristmas.com or something. And just like that. And then I would forward that to my Teespring store and I would sell this thing. Teespring does all the fulfillment. Teespring, t all you upload is the image. Upload the image on the thing, Christmas, uh, they take it all. Pretty cool, right? That's $70,000 in profit for them. I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I mean, speechless, I guess, is the best, the best reaction. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, le it's legit. I mean, that's just one person. And that's probably not their only run. 
They sold 7,000 in this run. I'll bet they, this is like probably their fourth run of this. And they're going to, Christmas just getting started. They're probably going to sell this. And if you don't believe me, there are com Facebook group communities you can go in right now where people are posting their screenshots. Average people being like, I've only been doing this for a year. I got a guy, Travis, I'll introduce you to. He took my Dark Post Profits course and then he went on and started selling Teespring and Viral Style, another company does this. He sold $4 million worth of t-shirts. He's in part of the community. He said, he's down to, he said he's down to teach people. So we're going to have a guy teaching that just did $4 million. That was nothing more than a student sitting right where you are. He was working for FEMA, the organization, going to like New Orleans and other places, and for like three months at a time, and then he couldn't do t-shirts, and he couldn't wait to get back to do t-shirts again. So he did $4 million by not having time to do that. And I think he was living at home with his mom. <laughs> so anyways, when it's all said and done, uh, like look at that, pets, cats. You see all the like, zombies. I would push you in front of zombies to save my cat. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, this, you could sell this stuff. You could have a little cat store and sell this stuff. Then, after you get the list, go get your own Shopify store and sell, like, cat trees, these cat supplies, and cool cat toys, and cat pendants. The same thing. It's all the same stuff, you guys. It is exciting. It is exciting, exciting what you can do. When I show you what you can do with monetization, you have to have faith that if you learn the skills to be able to get traffic and build a list, you can monetize anything. We were, um, I was on a site the other day, there's so many sites, I was on a site the other day that'll do custom printing onto shoes. So you can take like a cat image and you can put it onto shoes like Converse, slippers, slippers yeah. everything. You can literally do it on any, any item. You can do it on leggings. You could do it on mugs, you could do it on water bottles, you could do it on cell phone cases. Meowie Christmas, get your own cell phone case. Right? Yeah. Buy one, get one free, 1995, buy one, get one free. They're like, really? That's 10 bucks a case. Yeah, and then you just pay for shipping, which is 10 bucks. So you spend 30 bucks, your cost is $4 a piece, you're eight bucks, they spend 30. You're making plenty of money and you did buy one, get one free. That's what we could teach. So we could teach how to make the money you need to learn how to build the audience and how to get the audience to buy the stuff, right? So that's why I'm bouncing back and forth by showing you ways to monetize it. So again, to summarize this kind of stuff, you can find stuff on YouTube. You can build compilations. You can create your own videos. You can find other people's generic videos. And now this can be related videos all day long that you can just like, after you click on one video, there's going to just be related videos about cats for, for a year now. You're going to watch cat videos for a year. Hey, I'm Andrew Hales, and yep. I'm doing the Tide Challenge That's a, today. That's a that's branded you advertisement clothing, from Tide, and then it gets in the actual video. Looks like they made this in iMovie using a template. Then just goes into a bunch of stuff that this stuff doesn't work to go viral, by the way. Yep. And look, they put a big watermark on it. So, so you wouldn't use this because it has the watermark on it. What you would do is you would basically go find the original raw videos, right? You wouldn't use this one that says Tiger Productions. That's an example of, you'd be like, oh, well, I'll give Tiger Productions credit. No, this isn't their videos. They ripped these videos and put their watermark on it. So you wouldn't do that. You would just go and you would just go like, sometimes they'll even put the videos in the description down here if you get lucky. So. You know, and then they're using music by Creative Commons, so they went and used copyright-free music. There's a way to do this. Okay, so when you get a video, like let's say you wanted to use this video, or let's go back to the one we were just on. Let me show you guys a cool little, like, uh, there's a couple cool little tricks that you can do. Um, you can actually go, and there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of ways. Let me actually do a Google search to show you. A lot of you are going to say, well, how do you get the video? Literally, you have Google at your fingertips. Watch, download YouTube videos. Are you kidding? Like, there's a whole world of the, at your fingertips to teach you how to do anything. You don't always need somebody to show you how. If you don't know how to download a Facebook video, do a search. Download Facebook video. If you don't know, so anyways, there's a lot of ways you could do this, okay? Um, let me show you an example. If you're on a video you like, replace the www, um, or sorry, but before YouTube, right before YouTube, you could put PWN for like PWN right there, PW in YouTube, and it'll take you right to this page, right? It just automatically t redirects you to this page right here. P so instead of just YouTube.com, it's PWN. Go to the video, after www. do PWN, and it'll take you right here, and it'll take you to this place that, that gives you a bunch of different ways. You can save it as an MP3, you can save it. There's like an example. You can find all this stuff. There's another site you can go to. You can take the, um, you can take the address right here, 
a YouTube video, and you can go to a place called Clip Converter. Clipconverter.cc. It's another website. And you can literally just go paste in the video, press continue. It'll probably throw up an ad, by the way. That's just how these sites make their money. Exit the ad. They'll throw up the video, and you can literally just start. And right there, download. That's, that was the first one I showed. SS. Exactly, yeah. So there's literally, if you do a Google search, you could probably, right now we could have fun brainstorming a list of 75 ways to download videos. There's Chrome extensions you can get that just literally a Chrome extension. Anytime you're on a YouTube video, the little thing, you just press a button and it downloads it. So many different ways. Like right here, epic funny cat vid videos. Save. Just like that. Now I got it right here on QuickTime, right on my computer. There it is. Epic funny cat, cats, 20 minutes. And it wasn't even that funny. Okay, so, so like, see, see right there? See how they had that whole intro? I'm in QuickTime right now. So one of the kind of the cool things about QuickTime is that literally inside of QuickTime for Mac, I can just go here and press split the clip. And I just, that little front, that little beginning part, I just split it and it's gone. Just like that. Now look, it starts right here. Let's see how easy that was? There you go. And then save. And save it as viral cat video. How hard was that? I just edited a video, cut out the part, made it right, start right on the viral part. This part right here, playing in the news feed, this alone will get people excited. Just like that. Okay? And I could also do this right here. I could go through and I could see like what all this stuff is. So it goes right to this cat jumping. I could see all of it just by scrolling through. So here's all these cat videos. There you go. And then at the end, clip that out. They're called X. They're right there. Edit. Oh, that's I didn't pause it. Okay. Edit. Split. Just click that. Done. Place it with a new one. Boom. Just clipped it. Difficult? No. If you have a PC, I use a Mac. If you have a PC, I'm sure there's a similar way to get that accomplished. All right? Video Maker, something Video Maker. There's Google that will say, how do I quickly edit a video for free in Windows? And they'll tell you how. Nobody taught me how to do this stuff, right? I'm just showing you the way some of this you're going to have to be self starters. So listen. We're getting hungry and there's lunch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a quick version and then after lunch we'll spend even a little bit more time on this. I think this is a topic that I think I want all you guys to walk out. So I don't mind taking a little bit away from one of the other topics I was gonna teach today anyways. Um, all you do on a very, very, very simple level, we're gonna go fast with this and then we're gonna come back after lunch and I'll show you how to do it again. Okay, we'll do it twice even. Okay, when you're on Facebook, up here on the top right, you know, it shows all your pages and stuff, this kind of stuff, the little top right thing. You can just do a Google search here. You can create a page, create a group, create ads. Go here to create a page. Okay? Look at this. Brand or product, cause or community. We'll just click brand or product. And then we'll just make up something cat related real quick. This is cat related. Right? So you can just create a fan page. Let's call it like, um, let's say I want to sell cat furniture and I want to sell, you know, um, you know, let's say like something like, um, cats um, are more important than humans. There you go. People love that kind of stuff. Choose a category. Animals? Is there animals? Choose a category. Oh, I have to work. Pets. Supplies. We're a pet supply company. That's literally how easy it is. And what about this part? Skip. What about this part? Skip. What about this part? Skip. Skip, and we have a fan page, and it was free. Was that hard? No. You probably want a picture, so we'll just grab one real quick and just be like uh, funny cat HD, like some like, good looking picture. Funny cat, and let's go to images. Grab one that's like a square. My internet's too slow for this. 
you can make sure it's royalty free. I don't ever think that there's even an issue, but always make sure everything's royalty free. There you go. Just grab a funny picture. But yeah, you can go to royalty free. Like obviously, like this is from a movie, it'll be a little bit less. But I mean, you just look for something funny. You just go, okay, let's just do this one with the tie or whatever. View the image. Save it. Funny cat. Funny cute cat. See, that's what happens. Cats are cute. That's why everybody loves. That's why this stuff goes viral. Because cats are cute. Funny cat. Just like that. It's uploading it. It's gonna be slow. But that's it. You got a page. Oh, you can just drag and drop, drag it around. I'm gonna put it right there. See, I made it a little bit better in the little square. Save. Now we've got our little thumbnail picture. We've got it. I'd probably also add a cover photo, but it doesn't matter. People are going to see it in the news feed anyways. So you could add one if you want. There's my little thing. Cats are more important than humans. Now that I've got that, it's literally this simple. Go over here to uh, any one of your ads accounts or go up to that thing on the top right that says create an ad. And then you just create an ad. It'll say, what page do you want that ad to be in? I want the ad to be on that page. So start over. Oh, I'm going to boost a post on it. Sorry. I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go back to that cat one. Cats are more important than humans. Probably because the humans, cats, they're probably bringing in a pet supply site. And now all I got to do here is go to photo, video, upload, and viral cat video. That's it. Complicated, right? There it is. Oh, I didn't upload the, I didn't upload the one that was the edited one. So I might have to wait. Let me cancel this. Discard. Let me delete. Which one was the viral cat video? Sorry, let me make sure that I actually have the one. Viral, let me put viral cat video too, just to make sure that that works. Yeah, that's a good one. OK, viral cat video too. Upload. It should work. It's just adding it as a thumbnail. That's right. It's taking, it's taking it as a thumbnail, but that's not going to be in the video. That's why I'm tripping out. It won't. You'll see. So it's choose, giving me a thumbnail to choose. Okay? So see all these thumbnails? You might have a good one. See this one right here? Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Of 10 of 10. But here's the thing. You could also go straight to your video, and you could go in, and you could grab whatever thumbnail you want. So you can go here, and you could like basically find like, you could find like a funny video, a funny one. Like that. Like you could find something like that. You could go through and you could find any one of these. Oh, that's probably worth Funny Cats Video Part 2. We could edit it more. You can go through and find any one of these thumbnails and you could use it as a thumbnail. So that's another thing you could do. You could come in and just be like, what would people like to see? Okay? So if there's something really funny that you can find in here, you could take a second and you can basically, there, we'll just use that one since it's already in there. But you find a funny video, if they, if you, it's going to give you 10 to choose from. Okay? And then add a uh, cat video. So I just say, like, uh, Funny cat video compilation. And then down here on video tags, you could put cats. And then you could put, you know, just start typing in cat related words. And you get like 10, 10 things, whatever. This will help you out just a little bit. Funny cat, stuff like that, whatever. So you could go put in a bunch of those. And then right here, say something about the video. No call to action. I ought to say, like, um, oh my God, if you are. A cat lover, or no, I'll say something like this. Oh my God, or I'll say tag someone you know that is a cat lover. These are hilarious. Okay, I'm telling them to tag your friends. Tag someone you know it's a cat lover. That'll help spike it up a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could go to captions right here if it was something and I could do captions. So it's all here, right? It's posting. It's not going to publish right now. It's 1%, unfortunately. So we're to get this is a bad example. I can maybe cut it down to a 2 second or 10 second video just to show you guys the internet's too slow. It's not going to do it right now. But I just want to make sure it's visible to everybody public and then I'm just going to publish right there. This is going to take too long in the background, so I don't know I'm going to be able to show you. So what I'll do instead is I'll just advertise another video to to give you an example right now. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to we'll let this upload after lunch and maybe advertise it then. So after this uploads, when you go to your ads, you're going to go to boost a post. And this would be like the funny cat video or whatever. So I'd say like funny cat video and then, you know, one. 
Like that's going to be my first ad. And then I'm going to go in here and choose an audience. Now, I choose my big five. So if you guys want to write this down, I do United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand. So what you're looking at, you're going big five. Let me actually create a new one. Big five countries. These are all English-speaking countries with credit cards. You can get a lot of views if you choose India, but that won't necessarily convert into buyers. So your big five countries are going to be United States. You guys need to know these. So just make sure you write them down. United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Okay. After you have your big five, you need to know your audience size. Audience size. Okay, your audience size needs to be in the millions. Okay, so it needs to be between 1 million to 10 million. Okay. In your niche. And then occasionally it needs to be 21 and over if it's something. So real quick, so we can go to lunch. I'm hungry too. Um, 21 and over never hurts. It'll always keep you safe in case of issues. Sometimes Facebook will flag you if you're advertising. Um, men and women, only, and I'll go broad in the beginning, but then if I'm selling, it, only reason I'll ever do this is if I'm specifically going to sell something to women only, I don't want men to be in the list. There'll be a lot of times, like let's say, like, Let's say I want to sell, purely I want to sell custom jewelry as my, as my main thing. I don't want, men aren't going to buy a heart-shaped necklaces. So then I'll only target women. That would be the only case. Okay, if this video, uh, well first let's go choose a video. Page and post, because the, the video is not going to upload in time. So we'll choose like, we'll just go to another page that I have and choose a video. Um, ha, cats are more important than humans. It just won't let me choose that, I don't think. No. Just let's only let me choose the profile picture. Too bad. Um, yeah, it won't let me. So let's do, I have so many pages, you guys. Fishing. I love everything. I love this, I love this, I love this, I love this, I love this. Crazy, crazy. Let's do, Maybe. Let's do, um, let me just go to my, let me just go to my page and advertise one of those other viral videos just to show you guys how to do it. Just to show you guys an example. Chris record is selecting page posts and then you just got to grab a video. All you got to do is grab a video, uh, something viral. Let's do, okay. Um, there's videos that are the one penny club, the, the one zero club, and that's gonna be branding videos. Then there's viral videos, that's videos like we talked about, like these crazy cat pictures, stuff like that. Those are gonna be something you get the three zero club. So like here's an example, this one right here, uh, this video, I could get one, one penny clicks on this, one penny views on that all day long, just using the strategy. God, there's so much stuff on here. It's gonna be hard for me to find. Yeah, I did advertise to this one, for example, and did 100,000 views. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Um, let me just take a picture real quick and just advertise that just to show you. When you go into your audience, you got your big five. Detailed targeting, if you are in, let's say, uh, let's say that we, let's go to some of these audience, let's go to some of these ones we did earlier. So let's say you were in golf. We did the golf one, so let's go, let's do that one. You've got a general term like golf. And over here, it's going to show your interests on the right. When you hover over it, look on the right side. 198 million. If it's in the millions, you know it's a good one. All these are in the millions, right? But see how Volkswagen Golf 
that's not at all. If you're going to do a viral golf video, is Volkswagen Golf a good niche? No, because no, golf is the brand, it's the, it's the model of a car. So, but remember golf courses, like golf, golf courses, golf clubs, golf balls, all this kind of stuff. So you could do one, one just to golf. Um, that's going to reach 36 million people. I would do one ad just to golf. So I would just do one ad like this, um, edit placements. So you're going to do one ad that's going to be just to golf. You're going to edit placements. You're not going to let it autom automatic placements. You're going to edit placements. And you're, you're not going to do Instagram. And on Facebook right here, you're just going to do feeds. It's going to be basically, all you're looking to do is you're looking to get it in the Facebook news feed. That's what's going to make it uh, viral. Okay? It's going to be the Facebook news feed. That's where you want it. And just so you guys know, Facebook's going to show it to mobile. 95% of your, of your traffic is going to be mobile. They're not going to show it to desktop people. I don't know if you guys know this, but everybody's on Facebook on mobile. If you look at Facebook's app usage on mobile apps compared to Facebook's desktop usage, it's off the hook. Everybody's on mobile. So what's going to happen is people are going to be scrolling. They're going to see your video. They're going to watch it just like this. They're going to click link. So make sure your whole funnel is mobile optimized. Make sure whatever thing they click on is mobile optimized. So just like this, um, I would go mobile only. They're going to do it anyways. Mobile only right here on the feed. Just right there. Mobile only feeds. There you go. That's it. What I do, I chose golf as an interest, mobile only feeds, daily budget, you guys, $5. Okay? Let me put that as well. $5 a day. That's it. That's the magic number. <clears throat> oh, let's put mobile only. Mobile, Facebook only. Okay, there you go. That's the, as simple as it is, this is the recipe. Big five countries, make sure your audience is a million to 10 million dollars, or 10 million people in your niche, five dollars a day ad, mobile Facebook only. As long as the video is good, you're going to trigger this. So I'm not actually advertising a video in this example, we're kind of faking it. Um, don't, when you get charged, you can play around with this, impression versus engagement, but it's basically going to be the same. I just leave everything else the same. So again, in, in a nutshell, big five, choose at one or multiple interests that are going to get you over a million in your view. 35, I said one to 10 million, but golf, we're just going to run one $5 a day ad here. And there you go. Then you continue, and you're going to choose the post that you want it to be to. Unfortunately, um, that post is not available. So that would be the perfect, if I could just get that post, it's got four points. I should have edited a small video. We don't have time. We've got to go to lunch. Can you guys bear with me? This is just a hypothetical example. It's just a hypothetical example because I'm not going to be able to get it. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get it done in time. Um, so we'll go back to it. So here we go. We're just going to advertise this picture here. It previews what it's going to look like. It's going to look like that. We're going to pretend that's a cat video. Okay. Um, okay. URL parameters. If we want to get uh, if we want to get advanced. This is where you can add things on your links. But don't worry about that right now, but that's where you would add something. You literally would go in there and you would do, you know, um, whatever. You would do like source equals Facebook, you know, and um, keyword equals golf. And it would tell me it came from a Facebook ad, it came from the golf ad, just like that. But right now, and it will just add all that to your ad. We're going to have to do that at another time. That's like not, you don't go crazy advanced right before we eat lunch, okay? That's actually advanced. Um, and then track all conversions from my Facebook pixel. If you're selling something, it's nice. If you're going to be selling something or getting opt-ins, it's nice. You can have a Facebook. You can tell Facebook when it converts to a lead. So Facebook will actually tell you how much you're paying per lead on your ad. Again, advanced, but worth doing. So there's my ad. It's really that easy. I just, did, I just basically took golf, $5 a day to people that like golf are, are basically doing that ad. $5 a day, people like golf. Let's go in and let's continue and let's, let's do it again right now. Okay, let's create an ad. Watch how simple this is. We're going to do it one more time right in front of you. Boost a post. Let's call this, actually, let's call this Chris Record Picture. Um, let's call it Piss, Piss, Chris Record Picture Example. And now let's do in this one, let's do um, Tiger Woods. So I'm creating a new campaign, brand new campaign, brand new ad. This one, I'm going to target Tiger Woods. First one was golf. This one, I'm going to target Tiger Woods. Continue. Everything the same. Watch what I do. Watch what I it's look, 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 look how simple it is. In fact, you could time me. It's going to be like a minute to place an ad. Canada, United Kingdom, 
Australia, and New Zealand. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five. I got the five. Again, it's going to go 21 years old and older, men and women. And right now, let's do Tiger Woods. Now, it's going to give you a bunch of these. This one right here, this first one, is an interest with 5 million people. That's the one I want. See all these other ones, 4,000, 70,000, whatever. I want this one here, 5 million. Let's see if it's over a million here, 3.2 million. So that fits in my 1 to 10 million range. Okay. Now, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to edit placements. I'm going to do mobile only and not on Instagram. Okay. Mobile only on Facebook. I'm going to change my budget to $5 per day. Now I'm going to go continue. And then I'm just going to go in here and choose my page that I want it. Now, of course, this would be like a viral cat video or a golf video or whatever. It would be something real instead of something fake. Um, choose my page. It would go even faster. If, uh, if faster in it, would even, this would be super fast. Um, You're still trying to upload that other video. Yeah, it's probably slowing me down. And then I think we're on shared connection here in the room. Same thing right there. Grab, I'm grabbing this video uh, or this picture here, timeline photos. As soon as it loads, it'll show you a preview of it. It's showing the preview. As soon as the preview's up, I could just press continue. I could probably just place, place order anyways. <laughs> Not instead of waiting for the preview. And there it is. What's that? Probably a minute. So it's a minute for me to spend $5 a day. I just placed two ads. Then I'll go back and I'll do it again. Now what you can do is you can save the audience. So I can create a saved audience called Big Five Countries and then I never have to type those countries in every single time. We'll do that really quick. So this is how easy placing ads are. And you guys, I kid you not, what I'm doing right now, if you have, if, if these are golf keywords, if you had a viral video about golf, it could do it. Even better viral videos are like more specific. So instead of golf, it would be more, instead of a general word, something more specific. And even Tiger Woods is pretty general. He's like kind of a celebrity. So you're gonna get all kinds of weird stuff. Facebook might have people that are negatively talking about Tiger Woods because of his stuff. They might be showing up in the audience. So you just keep going in here, create an ad. It's the easiest thing in the world. Boost your post, because you're finding that post. So we'll do Chris, picture, example. Um, and then this time we'll do another golf word. Let's do um, golf, uh, golf equipment. Well, let's just do one that's all about golf equipment. People that are interested in golf equipment. Okay, remember now, this time I'll save the audience. Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand. Okay, so this time what I'll do is I'll actually, um, and I'll make it 21 and above. What I'll actually do is go down here and press save this audience. And let's call this big five countries. <coughs> Saved. So now when I place this ad, now when I, when I go up, there will be, um, I can go to use the saved audience. Instead of cr typing that every time I go to use the saved audience, it'll bring that up automatically for me. Okay, remember the thing, edit placements, mobile, Take off Instagram, daily budget, $5 a day, and then go down to continue. Go and find that ad. Okay, so it's really, you guys get the process, right? I'm, all, I'm, all I'm basically doing is um, creating multiple ads, and just like that, I, created five, I just created three ads, $5 a day. Remember how I said 15 or $20 is what you need to spark it? So what you're doing, what you're essentially doing is you're creating these ads and then you're letting them go for 24 hours. If after 24 hours, if, any, if you're using a viral video, remember all the different types of videos you could do? If you're using a viral one, if after 24 hours you're not in the 3-0 club, pause it. Stop it. Don't even bother. You could do better. Pause anything that's not in the 3-0 club. Keep everything that is. That's it. Straightforward. If your video is not a super viral video, if it's just kind of a cool video, or if it's a video of you, then one penny. Don't pay for anything over one penny. If your video is straight selling something, hardcore, then, then don't worry about the cost per view, worry about the ROI. If your video is straight selling something, give it a run. Say, I'll pay 50 bucks, see what I can do with it, and see how much money you've made. If you haven't made profit, you haven't made profit. Straight up. So. At the end of the day, um, this, is, this is the strategy. This is the strategy. You find viral videos, you edit them down, you publish them to your page, you choose a good thumbnail. Then you go over here and you place some ads to it using a big audience, one to, one to 10 million people, $5 a day, make sure it's mobile Facebook, and then you let them run for 24 hours. If anything is not in the three zero club, pause it. With the exception if it's a branded video of yourself or something like that. If it's a viral video, pause it. 
Repeat this process two or three times. If it's not working for you, it's the video. Pause it. I mean, you just no, stop it forever. Okay. Delete it. Kill it. Kill it. Let's murder it. Just murder that ad. Murder that ad. Yeah. So like, so like, it's either it's it's either one or two things. It's either the the video itself is just not going to get three zero views, or it's your experience level in Facebook advertising and targeting. Right. So what I mean is you might you might like I the audience golf might be at the 2-0 club, the audience Tiger Woods might be at the 2-0 club, and the audience all about golf equipment or something might be at the 3-0 club. That's like, you know, that's the, you never know. So like, you gotta place like, what I'll do is I'll place like 10 different audiences, and then after a day I'll look and see, because I might spend more money than you, but I'll spend like 50 bucks just to see which one is good, and I'll go, out of these 10, only two of them in the 3-0 club, I'll pause all the rest and let those ones ride. Kill it, oh sorry. I'd murder the other ads, and then, you know. The language, internationally, to understand. <laughs> You're right. Pa pause. Uh, pause. Maybe you can come back to it later, but I'll kill it. OK, uh, I want to go to lunch. I know there's a couple anxious questions. Um, as long as they're not long, what I want to do is I want to go to lunch. At the end of lunch, th at the end of lunch uh, during lunch, I'm going to upload another video, too. At the end of lunch, I'll have a brand new fan page, brand new video. We'll place ads again. I'll see if my internet can get faster. And then we'll talk about this even more. So you're saying pause so you can go back and re-edit it, or, can you, or should you delete? I mean, you're saying pause, but. OK, so pause versus delete. OK, when you delete an ad, you lose all the stats. When you pause an ad, you can forever go back and see those stats. So the reason I pause is because I might want to view those statistics at some point. I might mm -hmm. want to see, like, why did it not perform that way? Or I might want to remember it performed that way. I might want to remember which keywords didn't work. If I delete them all, then I might end up advertising those keywords again. So to me, pausing just means I'm no longer spending money, but I keep all my data. Deleting means it's out of my account. Okay. So that's why I suggest a pause, not delete.